I'm Susan. And I'm Jan. And uh, we've decided to change our little playlist name. we got a Texas talk now. Because we're a lot of times in Texas and not up at the Shabin. So, And sometimes we're going to do videos that have absolutely nothing to do with the Shabin. <laughs> I know, I'm shocked. And uh, <laughs> it might be more of uh, some of the things that we do here around the Metroplex. Uh, Preparing. To go to the Shabin a lot of times. Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe uh, preparations of what we do on our daily life and, and where we go. Maybe estate sales we'll start putting in the playlist. And, and uh, yeah. So this is our new feature called Texas Talk, and it's in our Texas backyard. You can hear the traffic. Yeah, and we're off of the highway. <laughs> Not like the Missouri house. Anyway, so come along with us and uh, enjoy. That's about all we have for now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Today, Jan is going to show you her get home bag. Since she has to drive around the city, big bad city, she's got to make sure she can get home. Something happens because I'd be totally lost without her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And uh, since I'm not up at the Shavin, this is kind of a porch chat, kind of a not. It's basically a uh, women's get-home bag, or almost an EDC, but I'm going to do a different EDC video. I work 19 miles away in a big downtown metropolis area with the crazy uh, Korean dictator threatening to EMP all of us. If I have to walk home, <laughs> I'm expecting... Uh, two to three days to get home, depending on if it's WROL, you know, uh, um, and, and if there's any issues with, you know, traffic, Thanks. <laughs> if there's any issues with traffic being shut down and I have to actually walk, uh, I have five different ways of getting home by the vehicle today, and I have selected two of those routes if I had to walk. So this is my it, this is my get home bag that I carry in the trunk of my car and that just gets me back to Susan and, and our animals so we can make a plan if we're going to bug in or bug out. You know, not some big heavy duty prepper, but you have to be prepared. So this is my Yukon tactical bag. It's a sling bag. In case you want to know, this is a Taurus uh, G2 PT 24-7 40mm. Uh, I've got two mags. Um, right now it's unloaded because uh, I had it in the, in the house and not secured where I normally have it. And I have a grandson that hangs out during the day, so it's completely unloaded. But if I were going somewhere other than work, it would be in here. It would be fully loaded and chambered. So a uh, Yukon Tactical Sling Bag is the bag of choice for, for me. Um, I have three days... Uh, maximum of I'm going to get home and this is what I need to get home. Um, there are several lakes, creeks, rivers in between my house and my office and I always keep a case of water at my desk so if I need to get water before I leave I'll get water before I leave. But in case I have to refill I have the uh, Camelback all clear microbiology UV water purification system. Basically, you can filter some water with a regular water filter, put it in here. You press the button on top, and it takes about eight minutes, and it will completely purify the water with UV light. It also comes with a regular drink lid if I need to swap those out. So that's my water carrying. Um, in case I have to boil water, if I'm going to uh, make something to eat or drink, I have a 8 ounce uh, collapsible cup, stainless steel, and I can boil water in that. And I have boiled water on this. I, would, I thought first that it would just, ex you know, expand and collapse, but it does not. So this is a good drinking cup that I keep also on the outside of my bag. Um, in with the weapon, I have my Sawyer uh, mini filter, water filtration system, and the plunger to clean it with. It also comes with the collapsible bag 
These are like $19. Those are awesome little pieces of equipment. I have a Baofeng 500 or UV 5R um, ham radio. So I can program, I've programmed it to a local uh, sheriff's departments and I can listen to what's going on, maybe make myself a little uh, safer. So in this back, back pocket, I have a little 99 cent poncho. I have a neck warmer which I've used so of course it's got little fleece nubbies all over it. Um, I got this when I was in Iraq and it's wonderful. It's like a balaclava. I have uh, two trash cans and some um, aluminum foil so I can fashion a plate if I need to. I also have a Gold Zero Nomad 3.5 solar charger which can clip to the bag and it has a 10,000 milliamp hour battery so I can charge the battery or charge my electronic devices but if we have an EMP people this these aren't going to be working anyway and other than that it has the velcro holster attachment that I showed you earlier you can keep extra clips in it and that just fits into the back of the bag on the top of the bag I keep a headlamp so I can be hands-free if it's dark and uh, do what I need to do to secure myself and my surroundings. And the front back pouch is basically a hygiene pouch. Those of you who know me, I go nowhere without this. I would bathe in this <laughs> if I could. I also have a little SpongeBob SquarePants uh, collapsible towel. Uh, and here's my algae boo boo kit. It's got needles, thread, q tips, band aids, allergy pills, and anti diarrhea medicine just in case I don't get my water quite right. Some poison ivy soap and regular washing soap. And of course, I keep a carabiner on there. In the front pouch, I have my flashlight and this one has three different modes and it's focusable so you can focus a wide beam or, or a small beam. I don't have anything else in the front packet. Um, I have a current snake bite kit, uh, triple antibiotic ointment, a head net for mosquitoes because if you live in Texas you already know but if you people don't live in Texas the mosquitoes will carry you away. So this is when I decide to sleep or if I can sleep I'll put that on. Some uh, lactase tablets. Bug spray. Desperately need bug spray around here. I have zip ties. Advil. And I have uh, sunscreen lip gloss or lip protector and then also a couple other list deck or chapsticks. This is a fire starter with an emergency whistle on it. I think it's the Bear Grills one. Barrel rod. Uh, I haven't started a fire with this one yet so I can't really... No, it's, it's a Gerber. Bear Grills Gerber. So I can't really say if it's good or bad but I have it. And then I have a little cheapo knife. Uh, razor. I have a pretty good flip knife, lock blade, sharpie, right in the rain paper, earplugs because if you're sleeping outside or if you're even outside, it gets noisy. And if you're stressing because you're trying to get home and you're trying to rest, you need earplugs. And I've got an impact, what they call a tactical pin. You, this pin is metal and it's a can be a weapon. And then I have the collapsible Zebra F301 pen. I love these pens because they clap down really small. They're great for geocaching if you want something small to go in your pack. <laughs> on the side I also have another whistle. You know one is none, two is one. So, hey Dave. <laughs> that's from our buddy really big monkey Dave. Um, in case it's colder time of year I have a couple of hot hands. I do hunt and those come in handy, I'm here to tell you. And then uh, more hygiene, I have some temporary toothbrushes. This whole side here is my fishing and fire kit. 
I have multiple ways to make or create fire and to maintain fire. I have really, really fine steel wool. And I have uh, dryer lint for a tender. Apparently two bags of dryer lint. I have two lighters. This all goes with this ferrocium rod. And then with the steel wool, I have a 9-volt battery, which I keep capped and also in a baggie separate and stored in separate pouches so there's no way they're going to touch each other. Um, and then I have a fire starter kit. Basically, this is uh, Vaseline-infused cotton balls. And they'll burn really hot in quite a while. And then I have some fishing bait. This is power bait. A stringer, so if I have to hold the fish while I'm catching more fish. A small bobber, some duct tape, and then duct tape wrapped around a fishing kit. And this fishing kit includes an even smaller bobber, about 30 feet of monofilament six weight line, and then it has a baggie of fishing hooks and the little uh, BB sinkers and some snail hooks also. So that's my fishing kit. And this is just in case I'm trying to get home, I gotta spend the night, I don't have enough food to go somewhere. There's a state park that has camping and stuff, so I could kinda go in there if I had to. Also in my hygiene, more antibacterial. And these are coin towels. I don't know if you've seen these. They're pretty neat. They're little tiny compressed towels. You can use them for toilet paper. This is the one thing I don't carry in my bag is toilet paper because it just shreds. I used to compress it and keep it in there, but these work great for toilet paper. Completely biodegradable. They're awesome. And because I'm a girl, little girl part stuff, you guys divert your eyes. And I have a Go Girl, which I have used. This is wonderful, especially if you hunt and you have to wear a one-piece jumpsuit or coveralls and you don't want to have to completely strip down just to pee. Girls, ladies, if you don't know what this is, you need to investigate. And when you get it, practice in the shower <laughs> several times until you can get it down. But it's basically a funnel that allows you to stand up and go to the bathroom. And more antibacterial wipes. More coin towels. I have a pair of vinyl gloves and a pair of nine mil uh, nitrile gloves. I have family members who have lack of latex allergies, so I don't carry any latex in my band-aids or my uh, uh, gloves. Got some cordage, uh, pair of spare underwear and glasses, cleaning cloth. Because I'm gonna get home, but I'd like to get home with clean underwear. Um, this is a little bit of a med kit. I have stitches, uh, removing scissors, allergy pills, a CPR mask cover, um, some poison ivy, poison oak pre-tox pad that you put on in case you're going to be in an area with poison ivy, poison oak, and it's a pre-contact towelette. And then a couple of moist towelettes. And then I have some food. I've got a jumbo steak beef jerky, some kind bars, should be square. I have some Maisel coffee mix because I don't want to be anywhere without coffee and trust me you don't want me anywhere without coffee. Isn't that right Susan? I can attest to that. That uh, is chapter three in our book. <laughs> Protein bars, kind bars, peanut butter, I got some marmalade, and some uh, mustard in here, marmalade and mustard, mm. and then another uh, Slim Jim. Um, one of the coolest things I got, which I thought, was, of course I buy one, I can't find it, I buy another one. I've ended up with three of these, but this is a small uh, cat hole digging trowel. So if you have to do something besides stand up and pee, you can dig your little cat hole with this trowel and it's completely collapsible. They're very sturdy. And some of you are going to gross out, but I like it. I'm from the South. You know, we in Alabama, we like it. 
single spam classics and these are in the foil bags so they're not heavy and they're good and all you got to do is just open them and eat them now they've been in my bag for a minute so they're kind of mushy so i know when i open them it'll be like scraping the spam out and also some mustard so other than that the only thing that's missing in my bag that i took out and i should not have is my little eating spoon i had a little titanium spork thing that I had in here and I took it out and used it at the shabbat and it's not in here so I will definitely put an eating utensil in my bag. But this should get me home and if it doesn't well I'll be comfortable till I die uh, and I'll have clean underwear. So uh, and just to let everybody know that about every what two or three months we go through our uh, get home bags our bug out bags and it's just like rotating your pantry Yep. We have to. Yeah. But if some stuff hit the fan, uh, I'd get home to Susan and we would get our animals and make a plan. But uh, right now we're planning on bugging in in case something happens. And this is just my way to get home and as comfortable and as quickly as possible. I can't possibly replace all the calories I'm going to burn getting there, but I can be happy with my spam and my beef jerky. So that's about all I have. Leave your comments only if they're really nice. Uh, be sure to like us, subscribe, and uh, we'll get back to you with some shadowing videos really, really soon. Bye-bye.